I want to tell everyone very seriously, from the scene this morning, we received reports from first responders that it was like this out here, and then it was a wall of fog. Okay, it, it came down very quickly, and I, I think that that needs to be reiterated so people understand. This is not something that gradually comes in. This is something that can come in very quickly. You can find yourself in it immediately. You need to slow down. Thick fog pops up quickly near the wildfire in New Orleans East, and it's blamed for a deadly crash on I-10, one of at least three crashes in that area this morning. Good evening, and thanks for watching. I'm Katie Moore. And I'm Sharice Gibson. Now, we warned you the super fog could return throughout this week, but this morning it still caught some drivers off guard. It did, and there were at least three crashes, as we mentioned, on one stretch of I-10 in the east, not far from where that wildfire mm -hmm. is burning. And we do have team coverage of the incident and the response tonight. We begin this evening with Alyssa Curtis with more details on the deadly crash that shut down the interstate this morning. Alyssa. Good evening. As we've seen um, yesterday, this morning, and you know, the past few weeks, this fog can be very, very dangerous. This morning, visibility was near zero at some point, and now it's much clearer. Traffic is flowing, but you know, this is not the last time we're going to see this fog. So, in light of that, we've asked NOPD and DOTD what can be done to better prepare and respond to these dangerous and deadly scenarios. Interstate's completely blocked. I can't get through it. All three lanes and the shoulders are blocked. At some points early Tuesday morning, drivers on I-10 could barely see anything in front of them. Fog and smoke clouded the interstate. Around 4.30 Tuesday morning, cars began a crash near Irish Bayou. When officers were responding, it went from you can see to you cannot see at all. Uh, listening and listening uh, to the incident and commanding it from a remote location, it was chaotic. NOPD says there were multiple crashes east and westbound that included at least 11 vehicles. One man died and an 18-wheeler overturned. NOPD eventually closed I-10 in both directions and diverted traffic at Reed and Irish Bayou for hours. DOTD says there are signs along I-10 that warn drivers of these conditions, but they say they usually don't close down roadways because of fog. Shutting down an interstate typically involves dozens of, of DOTD personnel, hundreds, if not more, traffic control devices such as cones and drums, as well as law enforcement. The, the, the primary consideration is when we do shut down a section of roadway is where are we going to perform a detour. DOTD says preparing and responding to fog takes collaboration. Law enforcement has the authority to, to close a, a road down at, at, at their discretion. Our parameters are a little bit more stringent, but we, we, we have been in contact with them to, to monitor the area and, 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 and give feedback on visibility. But Tuesday, NOPD said they weren't aware of the conditions until they responded to the crashes. NOPD says they're trying to figure out best practices to help during fog, but it's not so simple. They can't see the roadway. They can't see the lights in front of them. They may not be able to see the police officer's lights. So there's... Uh, there has to be a more detailed plan than just putting a police officer up there to slow that traffic down. All I-10 eastbound lanes were open just before 12.30 p.m. Most westbound lanes opened around 1.15. NOPD said that there was a meeting today with multiple entities to discuss how they can better prepare and respond to this fog. They do suggest slowing down, increasing that space between you and the car in front of you and using your low beams. If you can avoid driving in these conditions, please do and stay safe. Reporting live at I-10 in Mishu, Alyssa Curtis, Eyewitness News. Yeah, we certainly want everyone to stay safe, Alyssa. Thank you so much for that update. Now, putting out the New Orleans East wildfire is expected to be a, re a very long and slow process. That was the message from the fire department as city officials gave an update on the status of the smoky blaze. Paul Murphy continuing our coverage this evening, joining us now in studio with what's being done to extinguish that fire. Paul. Sharice, this wildfire presents a unique set of challenges for the New Orleans Fire Department, which could explain why it's still burning more than three weeks after responders first discovered the fire. First of all, it is located in a on private property in a remote area off Chef Highway near Bayou Sauvage. There are no fire hydrants there. The 200 acre site is also bounded by pipelines, a railroad and canals. Fire trucks can't get close to the fire. According to the NOFD, 
The last time the city had a wildfire this large in 2011, it took months to put it out. In New Orleans, firefighters are trained to put out structure fires, not wildland fires like this one. Right now, there are eight pumps pumping thousands of gallons of water per minute onto the land. The water is coming from nearby canals with an assist from the Sewage and Water Board and the Army Corps of Engineers. As we learned this morning, when smoke from the fire mixes with fog, it can create dangerous conditions on local roadways. This fire is burning underground. There's no visible flame. You just see the smoke whistling up from the ground. And that's the challenge is we have to saturate that ground to put that fire out that's burning underground. This has been going on now for almost three weeks, this fight. I think that we're doing everything that we can based on the guidance we're given from the experts. City officials are now seeking additional state and federal assistance to put this fire out. The FEMA administrator is expected to visit New Orleans on Friday. Katie. All right, let's hope it ends soon. Thank you, Paul. Many drivers were on their way to work, leaving countless commuters stuck on I-10 for hours after the crash. Lily Cummings spoke with a couple of people who said this super fog was unlike anything they've seen. It was a mess. Chuck Fans commutes from Slidell to Kenner every weekday. Drove straight across Twin Span, no issue. After the Twin Span, he started to notice more fog. There was a fog, but it was drivable. And then instantly, on a dime, it went white. Fans says he started tapping the brakes, giving drivers behind him a warning. What's going through my mind? I'm thinking about last week, what happened on Interstate 55. Fans found himself in bumper to bumper traffic, and then he pulled up on this, an 18 wheeler on its side. I seen the crush cab of the 18 wheeler. Photos shared with WWL show different angles of the wreck, with a pickup truck smashed underneath. Fans went around it and safely made it to work, but others were stuck in traffic for hours. Almost five hours. Truck driver Chase Ward was headed to Mobile. He took these two photos within five minutes of each other, showing just how quickly the fog moved in. We spoke to him over the phone as he finally started moving. I just opened the left lane and you could see all the debris and everything from the trucks. There were several tow companies that came out and we've seen them pass with some of the vehicles. And they were, I mean, there was a Dodge Dakota that basically had no roof left. It looked like a, a drop top convertible. Now both drivers have a message for other motorists. Slow down. Take your time. Be late for work. They both said slowing down saved their lives. Lily Cummings, Eyewitness News.